Oh, what a week it's been, and I thought I would just run my experiences by you because, goodness me, I have had three seasons this week. I have had fall, I've had winter, <laughs> and, well, I'm going to end this video with spring. I was about to settle down into a nice week of succumbing to the body aches and pains that always come associated with cold temperatures, when one morning I heard a lot of noise. A lot of noise because the gardener usually is around on those days but he's always working other perimeters of the community so I thought nothing of it until I went out with my coffee to check on my ripiculous lalias as I do and I'm seeing all of this debris on my side of the hedge and I'm like going oh my goodness <clears throat> Talk about leaving the coffee aside and doing a mad scuttle to get all the ripiculous lalias away from the perimeter of the hedge where the gardener was trimming the hedge on the other side of the patio. But he was taking off the top and I believe that he wasn't quite thinking that he needed to let me know he was doing anything seeing as he wasn't coming into the perimeter of the patio. I beg to differ. I mean, how many years have we been doing this? <laughs> you can imagine my horror. Anyway, the succumbing to aches and pains and just settling in for the cold and wet days that were forecasted were over and it was time to hustle. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me give you a recap of my week, which went completely opposite to what I was anticipating. Talk about just grabbing a painkiller, hoping for the best and getting to work. All of this needed to be cleaned up before the rains came because it makes cleanup so much easier when things are not wet. And thankfully, I got to it in time. It wasn't easy, but I got it done. And during the whole shuffle and kerfuffle, all I did was literally place ripiculous lalias everywhere just to get them off the debris. I did ask the gardener to stop, please, just for a second. He put me on a timer. I couldn't believe it. I just said, I just need to protect these delicate plants from the debris that is falling over the hedge because some of those pieces are rather large. So I just chucked them into the blooming alley without any thought at all. Whew, but the cleanup was done and then I could relax a little bit. And then of course it was time to reorganize them and make them look purdy. Meanwhile, I did say in a previous video that I was leaving my millery crossed with Long Yi outdoors because I had faith in her and that she would pull through. I chickened out. I thought, no, nah, no, no, too wet, too cold, not enough breeze. So that has changed. I brought her inside and well, I also finally took off the blooms of my Serenoa to give her a rest because there's a lot of things that need to be done with her come 2024 and I still want this orchid around seeing that she's not doing too well in the pot. Now, the only thing with the cleanup that would have made me cross if it didn't rain. <laughs> I can tell you, sleeping, doing all these things. I don't believe I even had the snoop cam on on that day because it was just like, ah, debris, get that out of the way. So it was hustle, hustle. There was no way I was going to pluck Kimmy out of the hedge where she lives at this point in time. So I pinned a sheet over her until the gardener had completely finished what he was doing at the top of the hedge. So Kimmy is absolutely fine. Nothing broke there either. <laughs> the lengths we go to, but oh, I would have been so annoyed if something had broken. I would have really, really had a problem getting over that. And who needs that added stress this time of year when everything should be happy, joyful and preparing for the holidays? I certainly don't. Anyway, the rain came, so I felt a little bit justified in doing all that cleanup on time. And with the rain came milder temperatures, and we were back into fall conditions. <laughs> So some orchids came outside, which is quite nice. These cloudy days, I can tell you there's more light outside than there is in the indoor winter holding space. So I brought as many as I could outside that I didn't think I would risk because of the damp. I think we had 96% humidity that day.
day. So yeah, most of them came outside. But then of course at night I had to bring them all back in because the temperatures dropped all the way down to 10 degrees Celsius. But it wasn't that big a deal considering that <laughs> I didn't have to bring that many outside. <laughs> and I see root growth on my Cattleya lobata and I'm contemplating repotting her. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna leave her for that growth and then we'll see how it goes. But yeah, anyway, it was a good time. I was relieved to get everything done and the blooming alley looked a little bit more organized as well. I'm just glad that none of the heavy branches that came off the hedge did any damage to any of the Rapiculus lalias and of course my Crispilavia spike. I was already thinking that one's a goner, but no, I still have it, thank goodness. Let me give you a quick update on Stan the Man because I did a community post <laughs> showing you that one day I found three new growths, which brought the tally of new growths for Stan the Man to 37. And I'm going to correct that now because on the day of completing this video, I have a 38th growth starting. Now, I doubt that any of the new little ones are actually going to make it because, I mean, come on, we do have spring temperatures for the next three days, but this is ridiculous. This is asking a little bit too much. <laughs> I mean, if they all make it, hooray! But oh my goodness, I'm not going to be surprised if some of them fail this late into the cold months of the year. Anyway, maybe he'll surprise us, we shall see. And of course, I've been talking about my spring conditions. So we've had fall conditions, we had winter conditions, and now we have spring conditions all in one week. So with my orchid shuffle, I don't take out all the orchids, depending on which ones need it most, how much my body can take during that day, because taking out is one thing, but I have to also contemplate, am I capable to bring them all back inside? So the top shelf of my indoor growing space because of the temperatures for the next three days, including nights, they're spring-like. Nothing is dropping below 15 degrees Celsius. So all those orchids that have been parked up there are now outside as well. I cannot believe it. So let's go outside and see what we're dealing with at the time of filming. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> We will get to Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi a little bit later, but ahem, goodness me, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> If I wasn't checking my calendar, this is spring in the blooming alley. It is glorious considering how the week started. Oh my goodness, I'm standing in the sun. I'm a little bit too warm, but it is also very dangerous at this point in time to take off any sweaters because that is exactly the time when you risk catching a cold. But isn't this beautiful? Look at them all outside. I'm gonna just tilt you up a little bit so that you can see even the top shelf. The Prostechias are outside, Guarechea is outside, <laughs> Stamforianum is outside. Well, you get my point, everything is just beautiful. And the winter sun, while it is warming me up, it is not that hot that the orchids can't get it directly. I love this visual so, so much because even during the summer months, I have to have the curtains down because the sun is a little too intense, with the exception of mid-July through the end of August, when the sun is so high in the sky that I can keep the curtains up because the sun doesn't infiltrate on the leaves. But this is, I love the different colors of green that I see through here, knowing nothing is going to get burnt and you can see how wind still it is. Absolutely no breeze. So. For the next two nights, these orchids can stay outside and we are filming in the middle of December. Insane. I mean, outside at night because my temperatures are not going to drop lower than 15 degrees Celsius and it is 20 degrees Celsius in the shade. Just madness and I love it. My lutein blanc, of course, with temperatures like these is the powerhouse of fragrance at the moment and the heady honey molasses thick gooey sweetness is permeating the air. 
how I would love to tell you to now scratch and sniff on your device, wherever you're watching from, because the fragrance is mind-blowingly beautiful. Very misleading, because winter is coming, but we're so close, we're so close. Days like these give me such hope and uplift me so, so much. I know I still have a lot to go, three and a half more months of risky business, but this is encouraging, and I'm just feeding off of it for as long as I can. Would you please give this video a like? I so appreciate that. And would you please subscribe if you have not subscribed to the channel? Thank you so, so much. Even though it would appear there's not that much going on during these months, trust and believe there's always something happening. And it would be wonderful to have you on board so that you don't miss a video when I post. Back with Zaigenisio Murasaki Komachi, I cannot tell you. Let me just say one thing. Do not count your chickens before they are hatched when it comes to orchids. Rookie error on my part, I should know better. I had already announced a Purple Mania video <laughs> in a community post. Murasaki was going to feature in that one because it was growing this amazing spike with five buds on it. And then, yeah. Uh, we're not getting Murasaki Komachi blooms anytime soon. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Honestly, I don't know. Yes, the temperatures were a little bit colder for two or three nights, but the days were nice. So I left it outside, as I do, as I have done in the past. And then I saw two buds pop off and I thought, yeah, maybe I'll bring it inside. With the consequence of risking bud blast, but at least give it a go because outside it wasn't working clearly. Well, <clears throat> the spike itself has just gone a little bit soft. Let me show you. See how watery it is just at the end there? It's not nipped. There are no unwanted visitors in the indoor grow space. And the same with the buds. They just frazzled at the connection to the spike. The strangest thing ever. But anyway, I'm leaving this orchid inside now. I did say I wanted to get my zygos to grow much, much nicer and hopefully with the indoor temperatures at night. Being a tad warmer, maybe I can achieve that in the coming years. Quel dommage! I was so excited. Again, do not count your buds before they have bloomed out. <laughs> <Do>. <laughs> But let me vindicate myself a little bit with the Purple Mania video, which I will probably just post anyway because I have such beautiful blooms going on at the moment, but I cannot not finish this video off without showing you my Dendrobium Victoria Regina. Isn't this? I mean, for real? Look at these blooms! Just a beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for watching to the end because it gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition. No, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.